there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. And thank you to those of you who have supported my channel by liking and subscribing. Your support allows me to continue to bring you fountain pen reviews as I am unsponsored on this channel, so thanks. Before we get into today's fountain pen review, I want to ask you to set your social interface device of choice, alarm and calendar to Yoast Apple Bomb's YouTube channel this coming Monday, April 5th, when Yoast Apple Bomb will be introducing my video on my top three fountain pens. Once he has posted it on his YouTube channel, I'll post it on my channel as well to ensure all of your subscribers get a chance to see it. I hope you enjoy it. And on to today's fountain pen. But wait a tick. Wait a tick. I've just been handed this bulletin. This just in, Jialong Su, head of the world's greatest fountain pen company, PenBBS, has just announced the 2021 Year of the Ox fountain pen. And there are photos. Fellow pen enthusiast, investigative reporters followed up with PenBBS representative Baini Zheng, proprietress of the PenBBS Etsy store, and asked when these new models, numbered as PenBBS Model 269, will be released to the public. Ms. Zheng was quoted on Instagram saying, quote, We shall have it released on Etsy at the middle of this month, unquote. So save up your shekels, you pen BBS lovers, as this new model pen, which looks to be a bulk filler, will be up for grabs in a couple of weeks. And I do mean grabs because pen BBS Etsy new model drops tend to look like shark infested feeding frenzies. God bless him. So set your alarms for 5 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time some Sunday in April. You heard it here first, folks, on the down low, on the QT, and very hush hush. You heard it here first, off the record, on the QT, and very hush hush. Returning to today's fountain pen in question. One of the cool things about having a YouTube channel is that viewers will give you tips on new and interesting pens they found. A few weeks ago, a viewer alerted me to the new Wingsung Model 628 that had a 14 karat gold nib. Now, there have been Chinese pens sporting gold nibs for years, most notably Hero, and more recently, Hongdian. I held off until this particular pen because the pen looks so darn familiar. In fact, if you just change the 1947 to 1911 and the Wingsong logo to an anchor, you'd have a clone of a Mont Blanc 146. I know this pen will get some knickers in a twist, that a Chinese pen company would have the audacity to copy the Japanese copy of a beloved German pen. And of course, this Wingsong is made from injection molded plastic, not the injection molded precious resin plastic of the others. And the nib is made from a Chinese 14 karat gold, not the Japanese or the German 14 karat gold of the real pens. And to be honest, I really wasn't expecting too much from this pen, as the last Japanese 18 karat gold nib I bought in the Platinum President is stiffer than steel. And I know that the shape and thickness of a nib can affect the softness of it more than the material. But I have to say I've been pleasantly surprised by this most expensive Chinese pen I've ever purchased. Find out why it's so surprising to me right now. So today I think I've invented something new. Um, I'm going to call it pen gravity. And uh, it might take the scientific world by storm. This is how I came up with my theory. The next thing I'm going to say is my theory. Ready? <laughs> you order two different pens from completely different places in the world at completely different times, and you watch their progress through tracking, through delays and redirections and duty and customs, and they converge on themselves so that they arrive at exactly the same time. So I think this is the gravity of pens wanting to be together. I know they're coming to my source anyway, but the fact that they 
adjusted themselves to arrive in my mailbox at exactly the same time uh, bears investigation. Those of you Penn Einsteins out there might want to consider Penn gravity. That is my theory. It is mine and belongs to me, and I own it and what it is to. Well, and this theory of yours appears to have hit the nail on the head. <laughs> and it's mine. Because I received this package here from China. And that was through AliExpress. And this package from Goulet on the same day. So it's Goulet Day. So let's do our Chinese package first. This I ordered through AliExpress. This is the first time I've used AliExpress. And it seems to be in a really nice brick here, but I purchased this from Bobby's AliExpress store. I've done with I've done business with Bobby before on Etsy and on eBay for a, quite a few years, uh, and he's always been excellent in his uh, service. So let's open this package up because this is a special one. And here we have a very, very nice box with a carbon fiber kind of uh, finish on it, but it's in a deep, deep uh, sapphire blue. And it's got the logo for Wingsung right there. So you can bet this is a Wingsung. It isn't the very first gold nibbed Chinese fountain pen out there. There have been a few. But this is my first gold nibbed fountain pen, and it's by Wing Sung, and it's a new model by Wing Sung. And here's the pen. Nice padded box with some instructions in Chinese, and the pen in it wrapper. This is the Wingsung 628 and yes you might be thinking it looks a lot like another fountain pen and that fountain pen they're copying here would probably be um, a sailor but uh, it might bear some resemblance to a German fountain pen as well. And what's new about this is that it is a 14 karat gold nib and here's our first look at it it does look like a sailor doesn't it only they've got 1947 wing sung logo wing s and 14k on there and i'll be very interested to do the review on this this is a cartridge converter pen that's why i'm calling it a sailor and not a mont blanc so we shall clean this pen out and do a full review and see how much controversy we can generate about this new 14 karat gold fountain pen and what i'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons some measurements and then provide a writing sample after the writing sample please stay tuned as i will talk about what i like and what i don't like so much about this fountain pen Overall, this is a classic cigar-shaped fountain pen made from black injection molded plastic with gold metal trim. It is very light and feels very similar to the Platinum 3776. I've given Jack his 3776 back that I had on loan for a few months, so I can't compare them. But from memory, this pen feels very similar in size, shape, and weight. This pen is a visual clone of the Sailor 1911 standard fountain pen, which is in turn a clone of the Mont Blanc 146. Both the Mont Blanc and the Sailor have the bigger nib size, of course. From the top, we see a domed plastic finial separated by a gold metal ring attached to the clip. Uh, the clip has the classic Mont Blanc shape and is nicely springy and usable. 
you can find this shape clip on everything from a genuine Mont Blanc to a Platinum to a Sailor and even this dime store ballpoint pen but shame on Wingsung for copying the cap tapers up to about here where it's straight until there are three gold metal bands the two smaller bands bracket a wide center band that has a raised middle section with the hash engraved block letters Wingsung 628 and made in China this is where it differs from the sailor as the sailor only has two cap rings where this has three like the Mont Blanc the cap angles down to a small step down to the barrel which is straight to about here and then it begins to taper to the cigar shaped end finial the faux blind cap which is separated from the barrel by another gold ring the bottom of the end finial has a divot in it uh, which is an injection molding gate my Facebook pen friend George commented the other day that people don't generally know the difference between injection molded plastic and machine turned acrylic I might have to do a brief video on the difference because it is substantial but there is injection molded plastic like this five cent ballpoint pen and then there is injection molded precious resin which is a fancy name for injection molded plastic but there are big differences in the quality of plastics and how well they are finished injection molding creates a plastic piece that will have seams and gates seams where the mold fits together and gates where the plastic is injected into the part how well these seams and gates are masked sanded and polished away is the division between inexpensive poor quality and the more expensive high quality manufacturing this cap unscrews with one and three quarter turns to reveal a black plastic section that tapers to almost the end where it flares just a slight bit before there's a small chamfer at the end and then we see the number five size 14 karat gold nib let's take a closer look at this nib it has a nice filigree border with 1947 the inaugural year for Wingsung the Wingsung logo wing s and 14k when I was looking at this pen on Bobby's Aliexpress storefront I was concerned the number five size nib would look small but I'm not thrown off by the visual balance of this pen it doesn't look out of place or small I'm assuming the nib and feed are friction fit in the section but this section and feed and the cartridge converter is different enough to suspect the whole thing is glued together and that uh, feed is plastic of course now I'm not going to take one for the team uh, to try to pull this out uh, not on this one not on $112 Canadian I won't the section unscrews to reveal the included but unusual Wingsung converter it is an upscale converter that has the Wingsung logo on it and it's similar to other Wingsung converters we've seen but this one careful take this out here this one has a very wide mouth on it like both the pilot and the platinum but it will not accept either pilot or platinum cartridges in fact I can't find a cartridge with these mouth dimensions perhaps someone out there knows of cartridges that have mouth dimensions of a 6.6 .6 millimeter outside diameter and 4.9 millimeter inside diameter it could be sailor I don't have any sailor pens or cartridges or converters so perhaps someone could measure theirs and let me know whether this is a sailor compatible or not I'm suspicious it is now the inside of the cap is also unusual as there is what looks like a glued in cap liner that not only seals the cap but incorporates the cap threads you can see right there I wonder about one good pull rather than unscrewing the cap and whether that cap liner will stay in place again I'm not going to find out the cap posts deeply and securely but not as deep as a sailor 1911 or a 146 Mont Blanc the cap is so light it doesn't back weight the pen and this pen's balance is exceptional either posted or unposted so the pen is long enough to write with unposted or posted like this 
I've written extensively with this pen, both posted and unposted, and it is very, very comfortable in my hand. I bought this pen from Bobby's AliExpress store, Saint Pen PPS Chinese Pen Store. Don't ask me to explain the name of his store. Ask him. I have no idea. But I'm not surprised, considering I doubt his name is really Bobby. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Wing Song 628 with a Pilot 78G, a Pilot Falcon, a Platinum President, and a Wing Song 698. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. And of these five pens, the Wing Song 628 is 14 karat gold. So is the Pilot Falcon. And the Platinum President is 18 karat gold. The rest are steel. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the Wing Song 628, and it has a 14 karat gold. Number five size nib. Let's check the wetness. This pen is very wet. Uh, oh, I forgot to say it's a fine. This is a fine nib and very wet for a fine nib. I was very surprised. And the ink today is Hiroshizuku. Takesume. This is my go-to black ink. It's not really black. It's uh, more like charcoal gray. Here are some close matches with the Takisumi from Inkswatch.com. This nib is very, very smooth. And has some feedback, but it just glides and glides on the paper. I was very surprised when I first put this nib to paper on this one because of how very wet and how very smooth this fine nib is. And as to line variation, again I was surprised at how much line variation I get out of this. This is no pressure at all. And you can see how that nib flexes and bounces. It's very bouncy and very nice. Somehow I thought it would be as stiff as the platinum gold nibs are, but this is nicely soft. It's in no way a flex nib, um, and it almost feels fragile to me, so I wouldn't want to push it. This nib is so wet and so fine at the same time I find I have to purposely write bigger to keep the ink from running together in the loops of the E's and the L's. Fine nibs tend to make me write smaller and broad nibs tend to make me write bigger. I suppose it's a combination of the psychological and the physical. But this nib confuses my brain and I start writing smaller and smaller and the letters blob together. So I have to consciously try to write bigger. Because if I write smaller, the letters blob together, as you can see. So I think I have to train myself to write bigger with this pen. And I don't want to make the pen drier, as it writes incredibly fast, as you'll see. Comparing this line to my Richard Binder chart, it is a 0.4 millimeter line which is a western extra fine and a Japanese 
fine. And for our quote, and for some reverse writing. A lot more scratch, but it actually does write. And some quick writing. I missed the page. As you can see, it's plenty wet, and I can write very fast with this pen. This pen is so wet with a fine line that you can write incredibly fast. If people had a hard time reading my cursive when I write slow, imagine what a failure in communication we'd have when I write with this hot rod. What we've got here is failure to communicate. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? I have to say this pen exceeded my expectations. And even the fact that I had low expectations for the pen surprised me. Oh, it's a wing song. Even with a 14 karat gold nib, it can't be better than a Japanese or a German gold nib pen, can it? It just can't be, even at 100 bucks. I'm hoping that isn't cultural bias because there are so many Chinese pens that I think are amazing. Just look at my video from last Wednesday. It could be because one of my first Chinese pens, after being so impressed by the Jinhao X450 and the X750, was this Wingsong 698 piston filler. I bought two of these, and a total of four nibs. I was not successful at getting even one of these pens to the point where it could write well, and I bought these as gifts, and I couldn't face giving them out uh, in this condition. It also could be that there are two faces of Wingsong, as I've come to learn. There is Wingsong, and then there's Wingsong. This pen, fortunately, is a Wingsong, not the other Wingsong. Confused yet? I'm confused. You see, there is a wing song that makes this wonderful wing song 699 and this wonderful wing song 626. And then there is the wing song that makes these wing song 3008s. So either they're two separate divisions or two separate companies with the same name. I don't know. One makes student pens like these. And the other one makes nice pens like these. This wing song is the good one. So in the back of my mind, this could have been as disappointing as the 698. I was surprised the nib is so pretty, so soft and springy, and not out of proportion with the rest of the pen. I was surprised that a fine nib would write this well, as I generally don't like pens that make lines under 0.5 millimeters in thickness. I was surprised the pen's plastic was finished so nicely. I don't have the Platinum 3776 with me, but one thing that bugged me about that pen is the injection molding seams on the section. Every 3776 has them. They are similar to the seams you just barely see on this Pilot 78G. You can feel them a little bit as well. But this Wingsung is polished and finished on all surfaces, so the section, barrel, and cap are free of seams. Of course, the end finial has the same kind of divot that the inexpensive Pilot 78G has on its end finial as well. And that was a bit disappointing to see that for a $100 pen. I was surprised by the unusual converter and the fact that I can't find any cartridges that fit this pen. That might be a deal breaker for many people right here, unless it takes Sailor cartridges, of course, which I kind of suspect in the back of my mind is true. And finally, I was surprised that though this pen is visually similar to both the Sailor 1911 and the Mont Blanc 146, the Wingsung 628 isn't dimensionally similar to either the Sailor or the Mont Blanc. The Mont Blanc is a piston filler, of course, which makes it heavier, but the 628 here is longer, both posted and unposted, and one and a half millimeters smaller in diameter. And this 628 is larger than the Sailor 1911 standard and smaller than the 1911 large.
but when posted, it's longer than both the Mont Blanc and the Sailor Large. So this is no clone. It might look vaguely similar, but a cigar-shaped black plastic pen with gold rings and numbers across the nib that look like 4810 or 1911 or even 3776 might make the pen similar, but not a clone. This pen is significantly different from the German original and all of the Japanese clones, just by the numbers. And what do I like about it? Well, it's smooth and wet and nicely balanced pen that writes beautifully. Is it worth the $100 price tag? In a word, nope, 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 nope. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.